Welcome back everyone, we keep going with serial acquires. Today we're going to be talking about Danaher, this is an American serial acquirer. Actually their headquarters are in Washington DC. And so we're going to follow the same structure that we have followed with Judges Scientific. So we're going to go through some presentations from Danaher in this case, so that we can get to know them a little bit more about their segments, the market and how they've been doing in the last few years. And then we're going to switch to Stratosphere which is this platform that we use whenever we need to look at the financials of companies or also serial acquires. And then we're going to try to give some sort of very simple valuation following the Warren Buffett way as we have been doing for the last weeks. By the way, Stratosphere is this platform that we use where we have a lot of financial data for many, many stocks worldwide, more than 40,000 now. And if you're also interested in using Stratosphere and especially one of their paid plans, even though you can also use their free plans, you can use the affiliate link in the description down below, which give you access to a 25% discount. So Danaer started as a cyclical industrial company and it evolved in the last few decades into what is today, which is a collection of many companies, but more of a defensive recurring revenue business. Today, it's a much different business than it was in the 90s, let's say. And we can see here that they added some structure to what they call the Danaher business system along the way. So essentially what they do is that they buy companies and then they apply some of the knowledge and they help these companies along their growth. So it's a decentralized approach, but they also add something to the businesses that they buy. So as we can see here, Danaher today is a relatively big company. So we see here in 2022, they had $30 billion in revenue and they cover these sectors that are listed here. So biotech, life sciences, diagnostics, environmental and applied solutions. So they are evenly distributed among these sectors. We see the breakdown of revenue per sector. So diagnostic is the largest and environmental and applied solutions is the smallest, but in any case, very significant. So what is mostly interesting for us are the two following slides. So in this slide, we see that they have very consciously shifted the business model towards a recurring revenue business model. They started in a cyclical industrial sector and they shifted along the way. So we see that in 2015, the percentage of recurring revenue was 45% and they want to achieve 80% next year. So they shifted along the way and they list why among these benefits. And the reason is very well known. And it's because this allows the company to be regarded as more defensive because the volatility of revenue is lower. So they mention actually on this slide that the business model is the razor razor blade kind of business model. So they sell something and then they make money on the services or other products that are linked to the, to the first uh, one. And then in the next slide, they mention how they create value. So this is exactly what one should expect from a serial acquirer. They say that um, the compounding of returns, so their way to grow and compound returns comes from these four pillars. So first of all, revenue growth, second, margin expansion, then strong free cash flow, and then acquisitions. This is how they compounded returns in the last few decades, and the result is quite astonishing. So finally, on slide 10, we see the long-term value creation method through their acquisitions. And we see exactly what are the acquisition criteria, essentially. So they say that they would buy something in a market with secular growth, with higher barrier to entry, and then the company that they would acquire should have you know, competitive market position. So essentially they should be either a leader in their market or they should occupy a good position in that market. They should have a strong brand or have strong channels. They should have high margins and so on. And then in the valuation part, they mention one thing that we like a lot, that is focus on the return on invested capital. 
So essentially, these different ideas that are relatively simple and, and we talked a lot about them on this channel, when put together and when executed well for a long time, led to these very good results. And actually, to see what kind of results I'm talking about, let's go on Stratosphere and let's see the growth that they had uh, over a very long time. So if on the price chart we actually select uh, the max interval, so we see that in the last 33 years they compounded at 18% per year. So 18% Kager is a pretty good Kager. And in the last 10 years they compounded at 14%. So even when they were already relatively big, they continue to compound at a very high rate. So since they have this history of very, very good results, plus their presentation of the, what they do and the reason why they do what they do resonates with us. We were interested in, uh, in this company and so we want to look at the valuation because from a fundamental viewpoint, we are very much in line with what they are trying to do. And so sometimes we saw, for example, in the case of Nibe, that uh, the valuation can be relatively higher or that the market assumes a lot from companies and expects a lot from companies. And in other cases, the market is more benign or it doesn't expect too much. So let's see in this case what is happening. We see that, first of all, the growth of the company is not slowing down. So if we see, for example, the growth in revenue in the last few years, we can see that in the last 10 years it was 5%, in the last 5 years it was almost 10%, so 9.5%, in the last 3 years it has been 17%. So we don't have to worry actually that uh, the company is slowing down because it's bigger. It can be bumpy along the way. So if we look at the revenue year by year, we see that some years it was zero, some years it was minus something, some years it was very, very big. Like for example, in 2021, it was plus 30%. In 2014, it was minus 30%. But on average, it has been good and it's not slowing. Secondly, we can see that the returns, so in particular return on invested capital and return on capital employed, are around 7-8% on average in the last few years. This is important because this number has to be larger than their cost of capital for the growth to be value accretive, let's say. Third, one important thing that we always look at is how much debt they have. So if we compare the enterprise value to the market cap, we see that they only have about 13, 14 billions in debt. And so we're going to look at it from the lens of the free cash flow. And finally, before going into the details of simple valuation in terms of the Warren Buffett way, let's take a look at multiples. Not because multiples are important for valuation, but because it, they could suggest whether or not the company is more or less expensive compared to the past. So it's just a relative valuation. So if we go to ratio trading multiples, we can see that the price to sales in the last 12 months it was about six and it's for sure higher than it has been up to 2018, but lower than the 2020-2021 uh, growth. What this seems to suggest is that probably in the last two years, so in 2021 and 2022, the stock price moved to levels that started to be more and more detached from the fundamentals and then it retraced back. So today it doesn't seem to be much more expensive than before, even though it seems to be slightly more expensive than before, but shortly less than at the peak in 2022. So now let's go to the cash flow statement and let's try to analyze the growth baked into the price and how expensive actually the company is based on the past growth and what we expect the future growth will be. If we look at the cash from operations, we see that it increased quite steadily and in the last 12 months is at 8.4 billions. 
So this is actually a very good number because if we look at the numbers for 2021 and 2022, they were very similar, but the stock price now came down. As usual, in the Warren Buffett way, we have to estimate a certainty equivalent cash from operations, so operating cash flow. And of course, there could be several scenarios. One way to do this is to look at the past numbers and to assume some conservative estimate, some conservative number looking backwards. So, for example, in the last three years, the operating cash flow was about the same. So 8.3 in 21, 8.5 in 22, 8.4 in the last 12 months. So we can perhaps assume 8 billions as an estimate for the certainty equivalent operating cash flow. And if we look at the depreciation and amortization, this is around 2.2 billions. But notice that most of it, so 1.5, is in the amortization of goodwill and intangible assets. So this comes from acquisitions and the way they amortize acquisitions. Indeed, if we go to investing activities and we look at capital expenditure, we see that the capital expenditure is around a billion, so 1.2. And this is just to say that the depreciation amortization number that we use here, 2.2 billions, is probably quite conservative. So if we subtract from the cash from operations the total depreciation, then we get at a certainty equivalent maintenance free cash flow around 6 billion. So of course all of this is relatively subjective, so if you choose a lower cash from operations that you believe is, is more conservative, then this estimate will go down slightly. But let's keep going with 6 billion for the moment and then perhaps we can comment. So if we capitalize 6 billion at the 5% rate, we get to 120. So this 120 billion is the estimate of the enterprise value without growth. So if we subtract the 13 billion more or less in net debt, we arrive at a fair value of the company without growth equal to about 107, so let's say 110 billions. And now it's trading at 185. So by dividing these two numbers, 185 divided by 107, we get to 1.73. So essentially, the growth baked into the price is the 0.73. For example, if we assume that they can continue to grow for 10 years, the CAGR that we arrive at is 5%. Based on the past performance, it seems that 5% is a pretty reasonable number. So even though the multiples don't seem to be very cheap, actually by applying the Warren Buffett way based on these assumptions of the certainty equivalent cash flow, the growth that is baked into the price seems to be pretty reasonable for a company of this kind. And this concludes the video on Danaher, another serial acquirer on this channel. We think that in general, this category of companies have been well received by the audience. And I think that on the other side, they're also not so well known. So in, I think in terms of views, it doesn't really work well for our channel. But we are not really aiming just at that. We are aiming at bringing quality content. And as long as compounders really like these companies and find these videos interesting we are really happy with it so if you want more videos like this let us know in the description down below drop us a comment you can consider also subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so yet and we are gonna see you on friday bye bye